from family events to volunteer opportunities to community happenings, there is a lot going on in your community. Learn about all the possibilities and opportunities on this episode of Community Hotline. Hi, welcome to Community Hotline. My name is Monica Weitzel, we're here in Gresham, and we are at Metro East Community Media to show you what's going on in the community. Tonight we have a couple of organizations that are going to um, inform you, hopefully inspire you to become more involved. First off, I have Vassar Bird, who is the CEO at Rose Villa. Vassar, welcome. Thank you very much for having me. Thanks for being here. So Vassar, um, you've been at Rose Villa, what, six? Six and, and a half years. years. Six and a half years. Mm -hmm. Tell us, uh, tell the viewers who may not know a little bit about um, what you do there and what the organization is all about. You bet. So Rose Villa is licensed as a continuing care retirement community. That's a big mouthful. But all that means is that people can move into an independent home and then if anything happens health-wise, it's already sort of taken care of. We have assisted living services on site, a 24-hour nursing community. So there's no crisis decision making and that's why people tend to choose a place like a CCRC. And at Rose Villa, we've been there for over 50 years serving our community. That's a long time. So it's, uh, we have a lot of experience in how to provide the support that seniors need. What do you think makes Rose Villa unique uh, compared to other senior living? There are a lot of things. Uh, whenever you talk to someone in senior living, they'll say it's all about the community. And that's true. The people are really important. But Rose Villa is the only place where you have a front door and a back door. Mm -hmm. So our community lays out like a lovely pocket neighborhood with attached garden cottages, uh, folks can have their pets, uh, everyone's a big gardener, they like to mm -hmm. be outdoors. It's not a big tower or a, a building. Right, right, and that is different. And, and I'll just share my personal stuff with, yes. the, uh, with the audience that my mother lived at Rose Villa, as mm -hmm. did my father, mm -hmm. um, and they moved in about 12 years ago. And, and I just lost my mother uh, last month, but she loved it there at Rose Villa, and so did my dad. And, and you're right, having the front door and a back door and having a little garden space, and it was just like a, a little community. Exactly. Yeah. I, think, uh, I think that we do um, a really good job of really focusing on the person and being as creative as we can to keep them as independent as possible. So we have folks living in their cottages till they're 99, 100 years old, yeah, yeah. and we can do that by delivering services and making sure that we really are specific in taking care of what they really need. Right, and you're very good about um, keeping tabs on everybody. Mm -hmm. For example, when, when we had snow a couple years ago, mm -hmm. I know there were people coming to check individually, you know, calling, That's if great. people don't answer, you go down there and check on them, you know, make sure they have food and everything they need, and right. you know, just, it's very personalized care. It was wonderful, and actually that particular time was great. I had my whole family came as well because they wanted to shovel and check out everyone. So they were uh, being offered hot chocolate by the residents that That's we were right. helping. <laughs> I it's, love a it. well, yeah. it's a system. Yeah. It's a system. Well, yeah. I ended up getting stuck there because I, I didn't have a car at the time. I took a oh, bus great. out to see mom and then I no couldn't more get buses. out. Right, yeah, right. I, was, I was there. So I was there for a while and, and did spend a lot of time there. So I did see yeah. you know, all the good work. The staff is very, very caring. I, I, I agree. And I think senior living is changing a lot. In the olden days, uh, you know, it was much more a standardized kind of institutional model mm -hmm, of care. Mm -hmm. And even now, when people think about retirement communities, they think nursing home in their head. Right, and that's not so not true. That's, yeah, that's it's not. It's more like case. club, you know, yeah. or cool neighborhood. Um, so what we like to what we like to focus on is the individual. And so, our goal is to be collaborative with the, with the residents. I think our community is extraordinary in the way that we can partner mm -hmm. staff and residents to do programs. If someone has a, a new idea, we're locally owned, independently operated, we can implement an idea the next day. So you have a resident council that we brings certainly. those ideas and, and talks about them and mulls yes. them over. Yes. And then uh, the residents are very involved in making the programs work. They are. Right. Yeah. Couldn't do it without them. Yeah. And everyone who works there, I had a previous career as an economist and changed my career to be in senior living because I want to work with residents. I want to right. be with seniors. They are 
so inspiring, the, the sorts of stories and oh the, yeah. the strength that they display. It's something that if anyone has a chance to experience it, they almost always are a convert and they want to start working right. in the industry. I, I can understand that. And you know, the, the population is aging. I mean, yes. we're all you know, moving up toward that age where we might have to go into or get to go into senior yes. living because yes. really, yeah. there's some really cool things there. Tell me about some of the programs that you have. I know there's so many you can't name them all, but right. tell me some of the things that you right. have going on at Roosevelt. Well, we do a lot of community partnerships. So we have programs with our local uh, grade school. We do Start Making a Reader Today. We do a really cool after school program where they come to our acre community garden and see how where food comes from. <laughs> we thought that was a good a lot, idea. <laughs> and there's a lot of kids that don't know. That's really oh, a french true. fries and potato? Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's really true. Right. We have a theater group, a super, super hilarious selection of one act plays that they've put on over the last several years. And then on the 29th of this month, we are having a, a reading and acting out of memoirs for the folks who live in our health center. So right. all right. kinds I, of I plan ways to come to, to that. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. And, and the health center, for those who don't know, is what probably uh, years back would have been called the nursing home, yes. but really it's, yeah. it's, it was a, it's a good place. My mother ended up there the last year, but yeah. I couldn't ask for more caring people. And, and they Agreed. did really um, try to gear everything toward her needs. For example, she liked to garden and liked to pet her around with the plants. So they you know, put her in charge of you know, these plants over here right. and this and that, right. so that was great. And we, we run it in a way so that you know, people get up when they feel like it, they order breakfast, whatever they like to eat, whenever they get up. There's no like, it's seven o'clock, time for your shot. <laughs> right. you know, right. I don't know, it's just a right. crazy way that it used to be. But we're very individually oriented and our health center is a place that no one really wants to go. Mm -hmm. They don't want to ever have that kind of need. But it's the it's the insurance for the people who live at Rose Villa that if something happens, it's right there. Right. They don't have to go anywhere. Right. And the and food that, is really good. By I agree. The way, I, I must agree. say, Chef they Aaron tend is to wonderful. get they tend to get back into their uh, independent homes faster because mm -hmm. their care is right there. We can have rehab services come and help them with physical therapy right in their homes, so they get home faster because right. they're not going off site. That's good. And, and being right there with people that they, they know yes. as their neighbors, their neighbors can come up and see them yes. easily. Tell me a little bit about the foundation part of it. Yes. We're a not-for-profit and we have a separately incorporated uh, 501c3 foundation. At Rose Villa, when you enter Rose Villa, it's a big promise. It's a big package. We're in partnership with you, hopefully for the rest of your life. And so for any resident that outlives their financial resources, they apply for foundation assistance and the foundation pays all of their bills. Which is amazing. What a great sense of security to know that yes. it doesn't matter if you live to be 100 or you know even 85 and you've run out of money. Right. It's okay, and nobody knows. No, absolutely not. It's absolutely totally not. confidential. And and the thing is, people do live a lot longer. How do you save to live to be 102? Oh, yeah. I know. We have a resident in the health center. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, we do. Mildred, I think. What is yes. she, I think she just turned 103 she, or 102. She did. And she's she great. Did. She plays the piano during meal time. And, yeah. Yeah. She's wonderful. Yeah. We, were, so. we thought it was funny because there's another resident who's 100. That resident never gets to be the old guy <laughs> because there's a 104 year old. <laughs> is she 104? I think that's funny. Oh, she's that's 104. amazing. Yeah. That's great. Now you are make uh, well. Let me before we go any further. You brought a few pictures. Yes, thank and you for inviting so, me. Uh, yeah, uh, so maybe we could take a look at them. You sure. can tell us what we're looking at and uh, get kind of a feel for uh, how Rose Villa operates there. Terrific. Okay. Now, mm. So that is the Rose Villa Viking Dragon Boat Team. This year, after the Rose Festival races that happen the first weekend in June, we'll be fielding a team for the seventh year in a row. Wow. And we have done really well. That team is composed of staff members and residents. That would be me being really you happy. Say, you're, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, you are on that team. Yeah, super fun. It's a really great time. We're outside all the time, practicing together. It's just a, it's just a blast. I did. I was one of the Vicettes right there one year. And of course, no team is complete without <laughs> yes, our there's the cheerleaders. cheerleaders. So you can see there are resident cheerleaders as well. It's amazing how many people want to be a cheerleader. <laughs> <laughs> the ones I never got to when they were in high school now that's want to right. remember it. That's right. So that's our team. And then, as I mentioned, we have lots and lots of gardens. Uh, many people here are super big gardeners. They like to be outside. So we have so much produce that we have a farmer's market during the season, and all the produce proceeds go to the foundation. Right. So residents bring up what they can't eat, and uh, staff usually buy them. It's another, uh, And she's a huge Dahlia. Penny uh, has wonderful, yeah. beautiful flowers. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so flowers are available, too. And then we have, we, ha we like, we specialize in taking care of people who would never fit into a, a, a normal place. <laughs> so we allowed this, uh, this resident to retrofit a building we weren't using for a metal smith shop. So he makes, he does metalworking there and does all kinds of creative arts. 
bronze sculptures. Yeah, he's, he's a fun he guy. He's an awesome <laughs> guy. Yeah, he is amazing. And these guys are, are, are checking out their tomato crop. We have a luau every year, and we uh, make we, we uh, grow the corn that we use to steam the pig, and the pit is dug in right, the community garden. Right. I rarely it's miss really that. That's, oh, me too. That's always it's fun. Yeah. Fantastic food. Yeah, yeah, the food's great. So. How fun. You yeah, have a lot a, of great stuff going on. And, and your community there is, is pretty diverse. As it far is. as uh, I know there, you recently were in the news for um, yep. having uh, openly gay couples that yes. were living there and that's yes. accepted and everybody everybody is totally fine with that. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, that's and I think it's thing. because we attract people who are very independent mm -hmm. and they don't really want anyone in their business and they wouldn't dream of getting in your business. And they're active so people. They people are that have active. varied interests and, and yeah. travel and do all sorts of great stuff. I think stuff. people value the fact that you have a relationship and there's someone that you love. And that's more important than anything else. Oh, I, I would definitely agree with that. Now, you mentioned that um, senior living is changing. Yes. And, and so is Rosevilla. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Rosevilla is changing with it. So yes. tell me what you're doing yes. to keep up with the, the changes. Yes, we are very excited to say that we are uh, redeveloping a significant portion of our campus. Uh, we have uh, 75 new homes that we're going to be adding. And at the entrance to Rosevilla, we have a main street area where we'll be building all kinds of amenities. Um, a pool, a wellness center, a library, a new dining venue, um, all kinds of things right at Main Street where it feels like when you enter Rose Villa, you're in a village square, a little bit like Lake Oswego, yeah. mm -hmm. where things are very pedestrian friendly, very right. human scale. There'll be a few floors of apartments right there on Main Street, but then most of our apartments as they are now will be garden oriented apartments, single floors, uh, cascading down the hill toward the bluff that overlooks the river. So we have Lovely. so many opportunities for river views and mm -hmm. places for great parties, a terrific uh, food and beverage department that I can't wait to start serving at all these <laughs> venues. Oh, so, I bet, I bet. Yeah, yeah the, the way it's set up right now, mostly triplexes, are they? Yeah, right in between, there we have du duplex, fourplex, uh, yeah. and as, it, as, as we redevelop, it will be, we have some duplexes and then no more than three uh, attached cottages. That's so great. it'll be it'll be fantastic. So do you have a, a timeline on when yes. you think this is all yes. going to happen? We are pre-selling those those homes right now, and things are going very well. So we expect to break ground the first quarter of next year. Oh, that's soon. That's yeah. great. Um, so people, if people are interested in finding out about yes. being part of that, yes. they can contact your marketing department, yes. I assume, and take a tour of what you have now, and then see the Absolutely. blueprints and the, uh, the plans for. What's and going you on. can certainly check out everything on our website, which is just rosevilla.org. Very easy to find. Um, do I see my telephone number while we're on here? You can see the <laughs> telephone number, and we'll put it up on the screen too. So oh, that's great. Yeah, or you can call. Computer. Phone yeah. is fine. 503-652-3220. Great. Now you, um, we were talking about how you were um, in the news for being, you know, an open, diverse community. Mm -hmm. You also, I believe, were in the news for one of the best nonprofits to work for. Yes, was that correct? Yes, you made the Oregon list of best nonprofits yeah, in the state of Oregon. That's a great honor. Uh, yes, and I am really proud of it. It's all about the staff. We have people that. Uh, it's as important to the staff to be involved in that community as it is to the residents. That's great. Yeah, th yeah. there are some wonderful people there that you know. Agree. Even though I won't be going there every week like I was doing before, yeah. I, I was telling you earlier, I will go back because there's some, not just the residents, but the staff right. too that I, that I would call my friends now. Right. So, um, There was also something in the news recently about Medicaid. Yes. What was that about? Yes, we have just received our Medicaid certification for our nursing center. And I don't know what that means, so, so explain that to me. So the really great <laughs> thing is that we'll be able to serve our greater community even more than we do now by welcoming folks who need 24-hour nursing care but who do not have the resources to pay for it. Oh, okay. So they, if they're Medicaid eligible, they can come into our health center. Okay. So it's, it's That's a, a big deal, wonderful isn't it? service. Yes, it is a big deal. No, there's not enough money to pay for the care that people need. Oh, it's so and expensive. So, that's it. And so now we can serve a, an additional group of folks that we wouldn't be able to before. So it was a big process. I have to tell you, trying to get into a government program like oh, that I was... Oh, I can imagine. A lot of red tape. Horrible. A lot of red tape. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. But it's over. But we're you're here good. now. You're yeah. good. You're yeah. good. I'm very happy about that. So um, I know you have events here. You have fundraisers and things like yes. occasionally. What, when is your um, next event that you have coming up? We have a, We have. We only do one really big fundraiser for the foundation a year, and that's our auction, and that's coming up on Saturday, April thirteenth, five o'clock. Not very far. No. no, and it's. We have some amazing things this year. We've got a, a professional live auctioneer to help us, um, and so all kinds of things, trips and vacation rentals, and then things that are not so expensive, so it's a price point for right. everyone. 
Um, and I love that our, our own dining services will prepare the food. We usually ask our department managers to serve the food. Oh, so right. it, everyone gets involved. Everyone comes and volunteers. People, I notice the staff bring their family there a lot. It, it just has that family feel. And your kids are always, yes, that's always true. on site. That's true. Really? And I always, we always donate something too. So um, I'm Southern Heritage. So for the last several years, I've done an authentic Southern dinner. Mm. Barbecue, cheese grits, hush puppies, whatever you mm. need. Fried that sounds okra. pretty good. So I haven't eaten yet. Mm. That sounds really, really mm. good. All the way. So. Now, for people that want to get out there, you're on the bus line. Yes, we are. But the light rail is going to be coming out there fairly soon, isn't it? I'm so excited. Yeah. Yes. The, actually, our new residents moving into the new redevelopment, 2015, same year that the Park oh. Street station should open, the final terminal for the Milwaukee light rail. So how close is that? It is that's about three blocks, and we'll be running so the So we'll be up there. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Easy to get to. That's great. Easy. Oh, that's wonderful. Our employees will be, it'll be easier for everyone. We can yeah. decrease our, our carbon footprint significantly. Yeah. yeah. So. I would have. I used to take the bus out there a lot. And, oh, that's uh, a long ride. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, it's not, not so much that, but then if it was on the weekend and it, the bus didn't come, so you had to walk from McLaughlin, yeah. it was a pretty, pretty good little walk, so that's going to be a big help. Yes. What else should we know about Rose Villa? For somebody that's considering moving there or moving, you know, helping a, a loved one decide, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whether or not they want you know, to live in there. You know, I really think that um, our core mission is that we want to have a community that's just the best neighborhood you could ever imagine living in. It doesn't really have anything to do with being a senior neighborhood. We're designing it to serve seniors really well. Mm -hmm. But I want to have a place that your kids and your grandkids are jealous of, but they're not old enough to move into. That's great. And you know what? It, it is very kid friendly yes, and, and pet friendly. Yes. You have a lot of dogs we do. and cats. Yep. Around, so you don't have anything else, do you? Anything besides? Uh, we have someone who wants to bring a duck. A duck? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and a I said, duck? sure. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, why not? Yeah. I could just see him walking in on a leash. Exactly. That would be We'll hilarious. see how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I was thinking earlier today about all, all the different things you have going on. I know you've got the you've got the library, which I utilized heavily, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. and the, but you have. Um, Trips a lot of times. Oh, yeah. you, you take the residents on on all sorts of trips. Right. I know sometimes it's uh, going to the Oregon coast, or going to the casino, right. or going hot air ballooning. Yeah. Um, what, what are I've some of the What one. are some of yeah. the more unique things yeah. that you've had? I love the hot air do? balloon. Uh, we also uh, have a resident that's been volunteering with the Oregon Historical Society, and so he makes um, all kinds of cool, like Indian dugout canoe types of things. And Walt. Yes. yes. And so we've yes. gone and shown. He's shown us how to do that. He's done that with the kids too that we have for yeah. the after school program. So I like that a lot. Yeah, that's we do. Great. We do a lot of those kinds of things. And you have a wood shop there. We do a giant wood shop. Yeah, bigger than anything you'd ever have in your house. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> we've built a driftwood boat in that wood shop where they, one of our residents is a huge fisherman. So he built it in that shop and he's caught fish from it. Uh, and then we are in the Starlight Parade with a, a Roseville Viking boat. Dragon Boat float. And so we have built that float. The residents designed it and the residents and staff built it together. I was out there painting the hull with my kids. <laughs> it is so much fun. We, we want to have fun and we want to do that with people that we love and, and we are all in it together. It's, yeah. really, uh, it's a really good system. What do you think is the scariest thing for somebody going from their own personal oh, home yeah. into into a, into a live, you know, community living situation. Right. What's the hardest thing for people to Well, it's very much unknown. To? And I think the hardest thing is that you are really, you need to give yourself time to say goodbye to a phase of life that you really mm -hmm. are leaving. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people move here from the house they raised their kids in. Right. They lived in the house for 50 years. Yeah. And so we recognize that is the hardest move you may ever make. So we have a lot of support around that. We have people that help you space plan and all those things. But the core issue is that you're moving on to a new phase. And, and you should look forward to exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And people really do, once they move in, some people before then, but once they move in, they they say always, I wish we moved in sooner. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that we've seen is they, they say, I'm more like I used to be. Oh, what a great thing. Yeah. That's I've, a wonderful thing to hear. I'm more like I used to be. That's wonderful. So. Well, on that note, <laughs> Unless there's anything else, I think I uh, we'll wrap up. That was great, uh, Vassar, and I hope that if anybody has any interest in, you know, checking out the the new plans that you have or coming to the auction on April 14th? April 13th. 13th. Yes. 13th. Yes. Go to the website, yep. rosevilla.org, and check it out. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yes, appreciate you're it. welcome. And thanks for watching this episode of Community Hotline. Don't go away. We'll be right back with Bridgetown, and uh, we'll be here waiting for you.
Leaders are the cornerstone of local communities, and they enjoy the satisfaction that comes from being part of something larger than themselves. Multnomah County invites citizens to participate in projects that benefit the greater good of our residents. Want to help homeless animals? There are countless volunteer opportunities with Multnomah County Animal Services. There's always a lot to do when caring for almost 10,000 animals a year. Our shelter is at the forefront of animal care with some of the most progressive programs in the nation, and we depend on volunteers to keep those programs running. From showing cats to potential owners, to training dogs in the shelter, to fostering a shelter pet in your home, you can help your community by volunteering your time and talents with animal services. To find out more about this volunteer opportunity, visit their website. To explore other volunteer opportunities, contact the Office of Citizen Involvement. Shape your community. Volunteer. KZME Radio is a new station that is committed to entertain, inspire, and connect our community through programming that celebrates local music, arts, and culture. It was created to put local music and local arts on local radio and it is a vehicle for our creative community to gain exposure while also celebrating what the Portland metro area has to offer. Hey folks, I'm Mike Midlow from the band Pancake Breakfast. What's so cool about KZME? Well, it's local music. You know, you can't go to every live show. Believe me, I've tried. So you can tune into KZME and hear a bunch of music that you might not get to see otherwise. Why should you support KZME? Well, it's pretty obvious. I mean, if you like Portland Town, USA, homegrown music, independent radio, and if you believe in the powers of rock and roll, then contribute to KZME. It's music where you live. My favorite thing about community media is how people find their voice and tell their story. It's the message of, by, and for a community. We're a gathering place because it gets people of all sorts of different backgrounds underneath one roof. It's art, it's technology. A snapshot of our community. Going live in three, two, one. The League of Women Voters makes history. Our country would not be the same without their dedication. Formed by women who organized to win women the right to vote. It is now a co-ed organization. Studying, informing, and acting. Nonpartisan. Grassroots. Influential. Taking political stands on many issues. The League of Women Voters encourages all citizens to be informed and active in government. Join, Join the, the League, League of Women, women Voters of, of East Multnomah, Multnomah County, County in, in making history, history today. today. Hi, I'm Luke Perry. You're watching Metro East. Over 25 years of great community media. Alone, our reach is limited. No matter how great our intentions, on our own, we can only stretch so far. But at Rotary, we believe the right group of people working together can make our communities, our world, a better place. Rotary, humanity in motion. Hi, welcome back to Community Hotline. I'm Monica Weitzel and we're here at Metro East Community Media in Gresham, Oregon. Tonight I have with me two gentlemen representing Bridgetown. Zach Clark, the Director of Environments at Bridgetown Inc. and Marshall Snyder, the Founder and Director of Bridgetown. Welcome. Thanks for having us. Yes, thank you, yes, thank thank you for Great being be here. here. So Marshall, I'm going to start with you. You are the founder. Mm -hmm. what, um, tell me a little bit, if you would, about Bridgetown, what it is you do, maybe what your mission is, and why you decided to, found, uh, to start this organization. Um, well, Bridgetown's, m the mission is loving people because people matter. That's, that's, that's our mission. Simple and, yeah. and, and that's simple and easy to remember. That's the why. Okay. So um, our what and how is we create uh, relational environments 
or platforms or like the church would call them ministries or whatever that um, provide relief, uh, mobilization, and transformation. And uh, so those are our three things that we do. And each of those three things have or three uh, deals have different environments or programs in them. So like um, our relief thing has Night Strike and B-Town Kids. Um, mobilization is we mobilize groups and individuals into the inner city core and um, to practice generosity, just to be generous people. Um, and then we have our transformation aspects, which is a couple things beyond the bridge, lift one, and then a transformation trip 2.0 um, kind of deal. So, you know, as far as how it started, um, I, obviously, I, I, or I was a minister for 15 years. Oh, okay. And so um, I came up to Portland and a, a church actually brought me on and said, hey, we'll pay your salary to do whatever you want for three years. That was really the interview. Really? Yeah, it was quite the interview. Wow. And so... Heck of a deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So through that through that interview, I just I came on and and uh, just through a series of events and and different things going on and just a you know a real core of my faith and uh, being mm -hmm. that um, uh, just felt directed to do a, a couple of things and one of them was um, uh, the thing called Night Strike the or the part of our organization that tends to get a lot of attention and notoriety which is called Night Strike and at uh, Ankeny Square um, I just had a Honestly, I just had an impression that I was supposed to wash feet right here at this place. Really? So I grabbed a folding chair and a blue, like a basin, and I folded this chair out. And um, I was really hoping someone like you would come by and I could wash your feet, you know. But really, um, it was just a time of change in my world that I would, you know... Uh, so a guy came by and asked me if he could wash his feet, and he happened to be a, 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 a gentleman who found himself without a home at that, at that mm -hmm. time of his life, and he was struggling with addictions and different things. And so um, he said I could wash his feet. I sat him down, pulled his socks off and his shoes, or shock, shoes and socks off and put his feet in some hot water, asked me if, asked me if I could pray for him. That's basically what it was, mm -hmm. and that's kind of how it birthed. And wow. it was just a labor of... of um, reflection of what's going on inside of my life and, and with uh, my faith, my relationship with my faith. And and so um, it just kind of took off from there. Yeah. I mean, and the story goes on and on right, and on. Right, right. So. so do you still wash feet? I, uh, me personally? Yeah. I, and, and the others involved in Bridgetown? Well, it's it's a bit bigger now. Um, I, I know. Yeah. I, know it's, I know it's a whole lot more than that, but just out of yeah. curiosity. I don't get to because one of the... I don't. I, I really don't get to because there are you know 250 volunteers that come down, and we provide the platform for generosity to be there. So I would say that my role now is providing the platform. So my role as executive director is to raise funding and keep the platform going, so feet can continue to be washed. So uh, yes, I yeah. do still wash yeah. feet. I just don't Maybe get to not get as directly and not as directly. <laughs> um, and so it uh, it's gone way beyond that now. And so. It sounds to me like Bridgetown is the kind of organization that provides as much for the volunteers as it does for the people that you're helping because you're providing them the opportunity to be generous. It's Absolutely. So we call that a double mobilization. Okay. That our, our guests, um, they, mo they mobilize us. They don't even maybe realize that they're mobilizing us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, us people that, quote, unquote, have homes or us people mm -hmm. that, you know, mm -hmm. um, so you, we get mobilized and they mobilize us. And so we get to come down and, and just love on people. And so it's two worlds that collide and they find out that there's a lot in common. There's stories that are in common. Stories are being told around the table. There's just these, these great things that happen. And so it's a pretty, it's a, it is a great environment. It really is. Is the homeless community your main focus? I know you work with kids. Is that, is that the... Um, you know, Bridgetown itself is not a homeless organization. I mean, we, we're a people organization. So we see the mobilization of our volunteers just as important as the mobilization of our guests. Right. Or the and, and I, I sense that. Yeah. yeah. So um, we, see, we see people who find themselves without homes at this point there. And we, but we also see the marginal. We see those in recovery. Mm -hmm. We see those that are in the, the missions. And we see those that are um, obviously living in a doorway and those that are living in apartment complexes and different things like that as well. Wow. Um, mm -hmm. Now, Zach, you are the uh, Director of Environments. Yeah, That's sure. an interesting title. I kind of like that. Yeah. Uh, that must encompass quite a bit. What, is, what exactly do you do for it Bridgetown? It does. Um, so, essentially, I, I direct all the, uh, the individual programs. So, the Night Strike, 
our Beton Kids environment and the um, and the transformation trips that we that we okay. offer. Um, and so each one of those um, has its own leader, and I oversee that and provide direction and resource for them. So you're the big scary boss, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I have a feeling you're not very scary. No, no. It looks it though. Oh yeah. Well, you 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 could be a bouncer yeah. in a, you know, you know, on a bar, but I, I have a feeling. We have that's a great cool, story yeah. about that. We have to tell you sometime oh, so. later. Well, yeah. yeah. Okay. That's great. <laughs> I think we have a few pictures too, so maybe we can bring those up okay. and you can tell us what we're looking at. But sure um, thing. how long have you been there? Uh, now, uh, now a year and a half. A year and a half. It'll be two years in June. So. Wow. So the um, B Town kids. That's it. well. Let's let's look at this here. This is. Okay. So uh, what we have here on the uh, on the right side, um, that's our logo, of course, uh, Bridgetown. And again, our motto is uh, loving people because people matter. Yeah, that's a great one. Uh, simply, I like just that. it's I like just that. what we're yeah. about. It's really simple. It does kind of say it all, doesn't it? It yeah. says it all, and uh, and that's what we um, aim to live out. And then on the uh, the group of kids there, they're on a transformation trip, and so these are the the uh, the organizations, the youth organizations that come in to learn how to love a city, love and serve a city. And those are our transformation trips. Now they uh, are put into learning environments um, all throughout the city, uh, where they learn. To, um, to, to develop that thought on how, how to effectively love a city and how to serve wow. in that area, um, to be cast back into their communities and hopefully replicate that okay. same thought. I'm, I'm gonna probably ask you a little bit more about sure. that later, sure. but tell me what we're looking at here. I uh -huh. love that picture there on the right. <laughs> Looks like we have a little bit of uh, B-Town kids right there. So uh, as part of, the, part of the day, we let the kids just be kids. We do face painting, we blow bubbles, we play soccer, uh, we cook hot dogs and hamburgers. We just hang out and love on people. It is a blast, it is so much fun. That's, what, like fun. that's, what, that's what we do with our summers every Saturday. Yeah. That's where we are, we're, we're in various sites throughout the city just loving on our kids. Yeah, we have blast. trucks and the sides fold down into stages. Oh, really? And there's sound system well, and everything in there. And so improvisational we're, uh, theater or well, uh, music or whatever. Well, we actually do a program. So oh, we actually do, oh, okay. do an asset-based development oh. curriculum with them. So, oh, so it's, it's, very, it's very structured then. There's a very structured yeah. um, part to it. There's a real, uh, I, the, the focus of it being um, helping children to know that they're an asset into their community right. as well as the assets that are available to them in their community. That's, right. That's right. A, and then uh, in that one, again, we have some, some face painting. Uh, we have uh, our Night Strike event uh, right there in the middle. And then um, uh, with the transformation trips, we have people, we mobilize people into service um, as, as one of the things they do. And so this is a service picture of a service project um, that, that this group is doing. So. Um, just so, <laughs> uh, we just recently uh, rolled out a mobile bike repair unit. And oh, so every week, that's um, great. Yeah. every week we are repairing um, our guest bikes uh, to to keep them mobile, uh, doing some doing some maintenance and stuff like that. Um, but as much as it's for the guests, again, uh, our volunteers uh, needed a platform to to oh. you know he was a, this is Mike. He was an old bike mechanic, and uh, now he runs a warehouse. But he needed an outlet for. Uh, serving and loving others and he has just fueled this and taken it is amazing it's an amazing story and we're loving doing that and then also our our uh, our food line uh, we have mm. cook teams uh, that make amazing meals uh, we don't throw together anything with half effort everything is um, full on the the freshly, kinds of meals that we made that day the meals oh, that we right. would serve our families right. it is one Good. of my favorite places to eat it's amazing um, side of our trailer with our logo on it and, uh, and Night Strike, and, and that's a picture of, uh, of the mix. Um, in that, you're seeing both volunteers, you're seeing guests, and you're seeing lives collide um, in what, just where this. Where is this? What, where this is, is underneath the Burnside Bridge. So if you've okay. ever been to the Saturday Market, mm -hmm, there's mm -hmm. a portion of it that's under, uh, so underneath the, the Burnside. Side. That's right. Yeah. Um, it's underneath the Burnside Bridge there. Now I have to up. say on that, that the city of Portland was instrumental in us getting that site. Absolutely. We did a good neighbor agreement with them. Um, we worked with them. We have a great relationship with the Portland Police, the the Park Rangers. The city was really great in in helping us um, get that site. I'm sure that's instrumental in helping you to succeed in your mission. Well, to totally. have those kind of relationships. Yeah, we have a permit. We have a permit, yeah. and we have to do all those things just like anyone else does. And our kitchen is a is a certified kitchen with Multnomah County. We're right. inspected, mm -hmm. and so we're a mobile kitchen, and we do all the things that any group ha would have to do in order to have the event down there. So it's, we, have a, we have to rent a porta potty just like right. any, any event does. Mm -hmm. and So it's really cool um, that, in it that It is, way. that's great. So tell me a little bit more about Night Strike. Now that's, okay. uh, it's people just meeting under the um, Burnside Bridge. It's people 
your volunteers, your guests are people that are living in the community. Yeah. And what do you do? You feed them, you um, talk with them, you just build relationships. Yeah, we provide several different... Fix their bikes. Yeah. Yeah. Fix their bikes. Well, we pro provide lots of uh, resources, um, things like, yeah, there's uh, food. Um, mm -hmm. Again, we have about 200 to 250, sometimes 300 volunteers That's that come lot. every Thursday night. And yeah, so we mobilize them both under the bridge, but also in the city. So it's not just in the bridge. We go okay. out into the city where people are already um, camped out for the evening or have chosen a spot for the evening. Uh, we'll go to them and we'll provide um, things like peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, socks and coffee. So we actually go out and send about 100 people out that way. Um, so people, if people want to donate, what are the kinds of things that, that you would need? I mean, I, mean, I assume yep. you would take donations besides money, which is always helpful to any organization. Sure. But what kinds of things would... We have some high-use items, um, uh, things like our coffee, mm -hmm. um, peanut butter and jelly, socks. Socks Cox. are gold. Um, uh, socks, peanut butter and jelly, uh, coffee, and... Uh, yeah, that's uh, yeah. Sleeping bags, jackets, mm, blankets, mm -hmm, these sure. kinds of things, okay. uh, things that that wear hard. You know, of course, right, you know, right, you know right. slacks and things like that aren't necessarily. Well, and then the other thing that. is, we just started. We put it on Facebook. Um, uh, bike parts. Oh yes. Oh. So like if people yes. have bikes laying around that they're not using, we'll take those bikes apart and recycle the parts and use those to fix the. See, that's such an easy thing well, to do. and the thing is, is that you forget that you know just because they ride their bike that, that that's their only form of transportation right. and so if their bike breaks down they can't get to work if they can't get to work they can't necessarily sustain themselves so if we can help with some of those basic mm -hmm. items that's a huge deal for them sure. so sometimes even people that have three bikes sitting around that are just kind of parted out yeah let us know we'll that's you know, great and yeah. people that would probably be happy to get them out of their yeah, garage absolutely. or whatever kind absolutely. of scared to say that because i'm thinking no my garage will be a <laughs> bike <junkyard. laughs> that'd be your garage yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. environment yeah. Yeah. right right <laughs> Tell me a little bit about your volunteers. I don't know who wants to address this, but um, yeah. you said 250 to 300 volunteers sometimes. Yeah. How many active volunteers do you think you have, or is it, is it a, a fluid number that's always changing? Well, last year we saw, with guests and volunteers, we saw over 38,000 people come through our organization, through everything we do. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll see about 500 students come through the transformation trips from all over the U.S., um, they come from all over the place. Um, just to come here? Just to come to Portland, right? And so then we also have, uh, through our night strike, we see about 250 to 300 volunteers. So you have about 46 night strikes a year mm -hmm. that we do. So I think we're at like the 12, I think it's 12,000 volunteers, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken wow. on the numbers. And then the B-Town Kids part of things, we have a number of sites. You know, we, have, we did one in Gresham this year. We do two in, two in North Portland. We're launching one this year in Park Rose and then another one in Beaverton. And so we'll see, you know, a couple hundred kids in mm -hmm. that and then volunteers through that as well. So our volunteers come from all walks. So we have uh, we have a large majority of, of faith based people that come to that, obviously. But but we don't that's not our I mean, we're not pushing that. We're right. just saying, hey, come and be generous because people can be generous. Yeah, people absolutely. of any faith or no faith can, can be generous. Be generous. You absolutely. see it all the time. Yeah. Absolutely. So if somebody, someone were interested in volunteering, could they volunteer as little or as much as they wanted to? Yeah. Because it sounds like you have enough stuff going on. That yeah. Somebody could a, maybe come and volunteer every week or they could volunteer mm -hmm. two times a year. That's mm -hmm. right. That's right. And a good entry point into night is our Night Strike. That's right. Um, uh, where you can go and be a, bar, a part of the broad base of volunteers. And that's every Thursday night. Yeah. yeah. How, how are those volunteers prepared for what you do? Uh, we spend, uh, from, from the time we get them, we spend uh, time talking about, it's an hour. So they get there at 7, our orientation is at 7.20. Uh, that's when we start that portion. 7.20 to, uh, to 8 o'clock, we've gone over um, safety, safety guidelines, rules to live by kind of stuff under the bridge. And then we divide them out into their individual jobs that they'll be doing, so uh, whether that's washing feet, okay. washing feet, Good. that's, you know, that's, uh, you know, trash things, the food, the cutting hair, Everything. if you're a hair cutter, all kinds of things. Popcorn uh, and, maker. And, yeah. I can and do that. In that yes. <laughs> and in that, uh, each one of those um, uh, jobs gets an individual orientation. Okay. Uh, where the Maybe particulars of the before. job. Yeah. Right. Health, yeah, health. You know, for food, you would talk about health right. uh, things and, and how they serve, how we how we move the line along. That we have kind about of stuff. thirty staff that oversee that part, oh, okay. and That's they right. they orientate. They're highly trained. They go. They've gone through a cohort of training, so they've been doing night strike for a long time. So. It sounds yeah. like you're a very organized organization. <laughs> well, organized <laughs> chaos. Is, is it organized well, chaos? It all like looks that. great on paper and everything works and then you add people. And then it's, and it then becomes, it's, because people are dynamic. Right. They're not static and that's awesome. 
And so, what keeps it from being boring, I'm sure. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, in both it. ends. We like whether it. it be the guests or the, even the people that come, sometimes the volunteers are just as cantankerous as some of our guests. <laughs> I can imagine. To... <laughs> Tell me, do either of you have any uh, stories that you could share, any anecdotal stories about somebody who um, has either volunteered or um, been a guest of your organization mm -hmm. and, and how they might have been impacted? Well, this kind of has a couple different things. I was just thinking about this when you said that. We have a... Um, a young lady, um, I'm not going to mention her name, but a young lady who went through our B-Town Kids um, program. She was little. She was, you know, uh, 10 years old, 11 years old when she started coming. And she went, we kind of walked with her. She comes from a, a pretty intense family situation, let's put it that way. And not in a good way. I not in a good that, yeah. way, but, yeah. but pretty intense. And um, just recently, um, she's graduating from uh, a, a public high school here in Portland. And um, she just received, um, because of um, her, you know, I'm, I'm not going to say that because she came to night or B-Town Kids, everything was, that was the reason, but it was a part of the reason. It was a part of the, the uh, journey. And she just received a full ride scholarship to um, a local area. There's an organization called, um, uh, it's, it's, I think it's the Axe. I can't remember which one it is, but um, they do scholarships for urban kids, and she qualified for that and got a full ride scholarship. Wonderful. And it's really cool to see those kind of things happening in our in our city, where young people are able to connect. And we we believe, especially with B Town Kids, that they say if if a child has four positive adult figures in their world, they can they can make a difference. A difference can be made in their life. Yeah. And and then stories of Night Strike where. You know, you see a guy who's suicidal. I mean, what, remember this a guy dumping his, his pills out on the ground and saying, you know, nobody cares for me, nobody loves me. And this junior high boy bends down um, and scoops his pills out of, the, out of the bricks and puts them back in the pill and he says, you know what, you may not love yourself, but you need to know there's a lot of people here that love you and I love you. Just those kind of things that where <laughs> here's this environment where this kind of generosity can be, can be practiced. And... Um, and well, we, it, uh, I, that kind of generosity kind of feeds on itself. Yes. It, it just it, yeah, it grows. It does. It's like somebody with a negative attitude affects everybody around Absolutely. them, but the opposite can be true. Yeah. So what do you most need at, at, um, at Bridgetown? Do you need more volunteers? Do you need people to donate things? Do you just want people to understand what you're all about and, and, and spread the word? What, what can our viewers do for you if they happen to catch this interview? Oh, well, I think, the, I think, you know what, the number one thing is maybe this interview would make you be generous. Mm -hmm. yes. It's not a lot to ask, if, but... Yes. Yeah, if you can stop every once in a while in your neighborhood and think, how can I make that place more beautiful? You know, how can I serve someone next door to me? How can I be a blessing to that person next to me over there? You know, those kind mm -hmm. of things would be... I think those are huge. And, yeah, we told you, we, we need socks. We'll always need socks. Yeah. It's not something we'll ever run out of. You know, we, the bike park thing, those are great things. But... If anything, in this interview, you know, we have we we have great volunteers. We have sure. lots of stuff going on. But if anything is, man, if we would just be generous to one another, and we would serve one another, and we would be kind and tender-hearted and forgiving to one another, I think great things could happen. Absolutely, I agree. I agree. So. Well, we're out of time. Thank you so much for sharing. I think that's a wonderful organization. It sounds like you're you're making a difference. Well, thanks for having us. Kind of that random acts of kindness yeah. kind of thing, you know, yeah. just spread it out. That's awesome. That's good. Thanks for being here, both of you. Yep. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for watching Community Hotline tonight. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll be back here next week. I'm Monica Weitzel. Good night. <laughs>